minute two will be start and uh, uh, Mr. Kuben Young asked after presentation to have a question because have a, a flight home so uh, after his uh, first and second presentation we will have question for him so maybe uh, let's start it Good morning, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kyo Gun Yoon from Korea University in South Korea. And I would like to present about numerical simulation of thermal aging effect on fracture behavior for CFA-A, cast stainless steel under very low cyclic loading conditions. Cast stainless steels are widely used for primary coolant piping, valve bodies, and pump casings in nuclear power plant. And the problem of this material is that it is susceptible to thermal aging under operating temperature due to the phase change of ferrite. And the main factors of fact to thermal aging of cast stainless steels are material factor, for example, chemical composition, casting process, and heat treatment. And history factor is, for example, aging time and aging temperature. And this page shows the phenomenon caused by thermal aging. When you see this tensile test data, you can see that the ductility decrease and the tensile and yield strength increase when aging occurs. And when you see this fracture toughness data, you can see the decrease of fracture toughness is dependent on loading time. What I mean is that when you see this monotonic test data, the crack extension of aged one is almost two times faster than that of unaged one. But when you see this cyclic test data, the crack extension of aged one is almost 30% faster than unaged one. So in the existing research, the Argonne National Laboratory proposed a fracture mechanics analysis method to predict the thermal aging effect. Uh, they proposed three cases for equations. The first case, the first case is without chemical composition and without operating history. Then we have to use the simplest equation, which is very conservative. And if we have only chemical composition, then we have to use the case two, which is from sharp impact test of thermally saturated state. And we, if we have the chemical composition and operating history, then we can use the case three equation, which is the most accurate of those three cases. And although this can be a useful guideline to predict the fracture toughness, uh, however, this method can only be applied to the monotonic loading condition. And since I want to predict the fracture toughness under cyclic loading condition, uh, I used the finite element method. This is the previous study of our laboratory. We predict the thermal aging effect under monotonic loading condition. Uh, we applied the strain-based damage model with thermal aging constant C concept. We predict that the multi axial fracture strain of aged CF8A can be expressed as one constant C times multi axial fracture strain of unaged CF8A. By this prediction, we can predict the fracture toughness of aged cast stainless steel, and the predicted results are shown here. And if you want to get more information about this research, the, you can refer to this paper. And also, this is our previous study. And in this study, we predict the crack growth behavior of SA508 uh, material on CT specimen under very low cyclic loading condition. We applied the strain energy based damage model and by this model we can predict the fracture toughness of the CT specimen. So in this research by combining those two previous studies I, I, I predict the thermal aging effect under cyclic loading condition by numerical method. This is the application example. We applied the CF8A material at room temperature. 
And this, this page shows the test data under monotonic loading condition. The left side shows the tensile test, and when you see this, the ductility decreased and yield and tensile strength increase when aging occurs. And the right side shows the CT test result. And when you see the fracture toughness result, when aging occurs, the fracture toughness decreased to almost half. And this is the cyclic <coughs> tensile test data. And we use the same specimen as the monotonic loading condition. And the test is performed under 1.2% and 0.8% and 0.4% strain amplitude for aged one. And these two graphs shows the hysteresis loop comparison of aged and unaged CFA day. And this data shows the tensile test data under monotonic and cyclic loading condition of aged and unaged CFA day. And each point here shows the maximum stress point of each hysteresis loop. And this is the fracture toughness test under cyclic loading. Uh, we used the same specimen as monotonic loading condition. And we used the standard DCPD method to calculate the crack extension. And we applied the load ratio of R equals minus 1. To control the load ratio, we apply the displacement control for the tensile load, tensile load portion of this te test. And we applied the load control for the compressive load portion of this test. So these two graphs show the load, load line displacement curve of unaged and aged CFA day. And this is the crack growth comparison for unaged and aged CFA day test data. Uh, when you see this monotonic data, as I mentioned before, the crack extension of aged one is almost two times faster than unaged one. And uh, for extension under cyclic loading, the aged one is about 30% faster. So it means that the difference of crack growth becomes smaller when loading type is changed from monotonic to cyclic. And one more information is that crack growth rate, uh, the increase of crack growth rate becomes uh, smaller when several, after several cycles because this is displacement control. So the load decreases after maximum load. So in this chapter, we determine the damage model parameters. As I mentioned, we, did, we used the strain energy-based damage model. And we used the unaged CFA day, monotonic tensile test, and monotonic CT test data to determine the mo damage model parameters. The damage model, we applied is strain energy-based damage model. And we have to determine two damage parameters. The first one is multi axial fracture strain energy, WFP. And the other one is accumulated critical damage parameter, omega C. The multi axial fracture strain energy, WF, can be expressed in terms of stress triaxiality, which is based on Rice and Tracy. And A and B are material constants. And N is strain hardening exponent. And to determine this, equation, we need at least two different tests with different stress triaxiality states. And we have tensile test data and CT test data. <laughs> and for the accumulated critical damage parameter, the incremental damage, delta omega here, is defined as incremental plastic strain energy divided by multi fracture strain energy. And if the sum of this value becomes critical, then local failure occurs. And this page shows how to determine the damage parameters. First, we perform the simulation of monotonic tensile test. And from the simulation, we can calculate the average stress triaxiality until fracture. And then we draw the point here, the open square symbol. Then we assume the multi fracture strain energy at the stress triaxiality of 2.5. And then also we assume this point. Then we do the CT simulation to find the appropriate damage parameters. And the determined parameters are shown here. 
And by using this parameter in the JR curve, the, this black circle shows the simulation result using these parameters. So after determining the parameters, we predict the thermal aging effect under monotonic loading condition. Uh, as I mentioned, I applied the thermal aging constant C concept. Uh, it, is, uh, it is that the multi-axial factor strain energy of aged CF8A can be expressed by C times the multi-axial factor strain energy of the unaged CF8A. And the first one I have to do is tensile test simulation of aged CF8A. Then we can calculate the average stress triaxiality until fracture, and then we draw this point and calculate the C value. Then from this uh, equation, we can predict the fracture toughness of aged CF8A. So after predict the fracture toughness of aged CF8A under monotonic loading condition, we extend it to the cyclic loading condition. Uh, to apply the cyclic simulation, the first thing we have to do is uh, determine the cyclic material properties. And we used the combined hardening model with Shabozhek kinematic hardening model. And we determined those parameters from the 1.2% hysteresis loop. And the determined parameters are shown in this table. And the hysteresis loop simulation for veri verification is shown here. So after determining the cyclic material properties, we apply the damage model to the cyclic loading condition. When perform the cyclic loading condition, uh, when perform the damage simulation, we assume two conditions. The first assumption is that the energy required for fracture is the same regardless of the loading time. So we apply the same multi axial fracture strain energy of monotonic and cyclic loading condition. And we also apply the same accumulated critical damage value for monotonic and cyclic loading condition. And the second assumption is that damage accumulates only in crack opening state. To simulate this assumption, we modify our damage Fortran file to calculate that the damage accumulates only when the principal stress at the integration point is positive. So this is the fracture toughness prediction result of aged CF8A under cyclic loading condition. And when you see the crack extension data, the overall tendency of crack extension uh, is suitably predicted. And when you see this load, load line displacement data, it is a little bit higher, but it it is properly uh, predict the data. So I analyzed the crack growth of FA prediction results. When you see the crack extension under monotonic loading condition, the aged one is about two times faster than the unaged one, which is same as the test tendency. And when you see the cyclic test, cyclic prediction result, the aged one is about 30% faster than the unaged one. And also when you see the crack growth rate data, the increase of crack growth uh, becomes smaller after several cycles since it is displacement control. So the conclusion is that when the loading condition is changed from monotonic to cyclic loading condition, the differences in crack growth amount between the aged and unaged CF8A is reduced, and multi axial fracture strain energy damage model with thermal aging constancy concept is applied to predict the crack growth behavior. And by applying the model, it can reasonably predict the crack growth tendency that the difference in crack growth amount decreases when loading type is changed from monotonic to cyclic.
Uh, I will proceed the presentation following the previous presentation. This presentation is about numerical analysis for the thermal aging effect on fracture behaviors of CFA day pipes under monotonic and very low cyclic fatigue loading conditions. In the previous study, uh, in the previous presentation, I, I present how to predict the thermal aging effect under cyclic loading condition of aged CFA day. We applied the strain energy based damage model and also we applied the thermal aging C concept to predict the multi axial fracture strain energy of aged CFA day. So the predicted results are shown below. And this is the previous study of our laboratory, which we predict the pipe crack growth behavior under cyclic loading condition. We, applied, we also applied the strain energy based damage model and we predict the cyclic loading condition of load ratio R equals minus 1 and R equals 0 and the prediction results are shown as here. So until now we, have, we can predict the crack growth of thermal aging under cyclic loading condition and we can predict the pipe crack growth under cyclic loading condition by applying the strain energy based damage model. So the purpose of th this study is to study the pipe behaviors subjected to thermal aging under cyclic loading condition. And this is the application example. We use the same pipe dimension as Battelle Pipe Fracture Encyclopedia and the original test material was A106 grade B, but we changed the material to the CFA day material. And the crack is through a crack of 129.6 degree. And also we used the same loading, which is exactly the same as the original test. So all the conditions are same, except the material is changed from A106 to CFA day. And in this simulation, we applied the strain energy based damage model, which I presented in the previous presentation. And this model requires two damage parameters, the multi-axial fracture strain energy and the accumulate, accumulated critical damage parameter omega C. And these two values are the determined parameters. However, one problem in here is that we have to use the bigger element for the pipe simulation and the omega c value is dependent on the mesh size so we have to determine the new omega c value for the bigger element size so this is uh, this page shows the determination of new omega c value at the element size of 0.6 millimeter this is the fe mesh i used with the element size of 0.6 millimeter at the crack propagation area and I, I applied the same multi axial fracture strain value as the previous page and then I changed the omega c value to find the proper accumulated critical damage parameter and I find that the 0.35 is most appropriate this is the this black dark circle is the simulation results by using the omega c value of 0.35. Then I predict the fracture toughness of aged CFA day by using these parameters, which is the white circle shown here, by using this omega c 0.35 with element size 0.6 millimeter. So after determining the damage parameters for the bigger element size, I applied the pipe simulation. This is the modeling of the pipe here. And for the pipe modeling, I applied the C3D8 element in Abacus, which is first order and full integration in 3D element. And I used the 0.6 millimeter element size in crack propagation area. And for the symmetric option, I applied the quarter model 
and I used the silver crack size of 129.6 degree. And this is how this page shows how to apply the load. As I mentioned, it, it, the, load is, the load applied is exactly the same as the original test data. And the monotonic loading condition, for the monotonic loading condition, the monotonically increasing displacement was applied. And for the cyclic loading condition, the, for the load ratio of R equals 0, the displacement shown in figure 1 is applied. And for the load ratio of R equals minus 1, the displacement of figure 2 is applied. And this is the pipe prediction result under monotonic loading condition. And when you see the load load line displacement data, you can see that the uh, ductility decrease and maximum load of each <coughs> prediction results are almost same. And when you see the crack extension prediction result, you can see that the aged one is faster than that of an aged one. And this one is the pipe prediction result under cyclic loading condition, the load load line displacement prediction. Uh, you can see that the maximum load is almost the same. And when you see the load decrease, the aged one is faster than that of an aged one since the crack extension of aged one is faster. And this is the prediction result for cyclic loading, crack growth behavior. And you can see that the aged one crack grows faster than an aged one. And this crack growth rate, uh, the increase of crack growth rate becomes smaller after several cycles since it is also displacement control. And this page shows the analysis of crack growth behavior. This one is the crack extension data versus load line displacement. And the black line means the monotonic loading. And the solid line means the unaged. And the dashed line means aged. And the red line means the cyclic loading of load ratio R equals 0. And the blue line means the load, uh, load ratio R equals minus 1. So to find the <coughs> tendency, I divide the delta A of aged <coughs> 1 by delta A of unaged 1. The calculated data is shown here. And in this red line means the monotonic, and this blue line means the load ratio of R equals minus 1. So when you see this data, you can find out that the difference of crack growth between unaged and aged becomes smaller when loading condition is changed from monotonic to cyclic. So the conclusion is the tendency as CT specimen, the, the, the same tendency as CT specimen is shown that the difference of crack growth between an aged and aged CFA day becomes smaller when loading type is changed from monotonic to cyclic. However, the crack growth ratio of an aged and aged pipes are bigger than CT test results. So the future work will, the more work is required to find out the reason that why the crack growth ratio of an aged and aged pipes shows bigger value than CT <coughs> test results. And further study is required to find out why the crack growth ratio becomes smaller when loading type is changed from monotonic to cyclic loading condition. This is from uh, this test is from Battelle Pipe Fracture Encyclopedia, and the original test was A106, but 
I only changed the material to CFID. Uh, do you do this test or, or you take the data? I take the data. Okay. So, at the same time, I don't have a question. We'll take the data.